In our last lecture, we introduced the corporate social performance theories. In this podcast, we'll examine CSR theories focusing on shareholder value. Shareholder value makes the argument that is what is socially responsible is meeting an organization's fiduciary responsibilities to its stakeholders. Now, rather than being as cold and heartless as it seems, the logic behind it suggests that in order for shareholders to profit, the organization must be viewed as viable, which allows the organization to be more socially responsible. Here are some of the key authors for shareholder value theories. The best way to understand where the shareholder value theories are coming from is to understand Milton Friedman's 1970 essay, The Friedman Doctrine, The Social Responsibility of Business is to Increase Its Profits, which appeared in the New York Times Magazine. This approach views shareholders as the economic engine of the organization and the only group to which the firm must be socially responsible. As such, the goal of the firm is to maximize profits and return a portion of those profits to shareholders as a reward for the risk that they took for investing in the firm. He advocates that shareholders can then decide for themselves what social initiatives to take part in rather than having their appointed executive, whom they appointed for business reasons, decide them. Friedman argued that a company should have no social responsibility to the public or society because its only concern is to increase profits for itself and for its shareholders, and that the shareholders in their private capacity are the ones with the social responsibility. He also wrote about this concept in Capitalism and Freedom. In it, he argues that when companies concern themselves with the community rather than focusing on profits, it leads to totalitarianism. So in the book, Friedman writes, there is only one and only one social responsibility of business to use its resources and engage in activities designed to increase its profits so long as it stays within the rules of the game, which is to say engages in free and open competition without deception or fraud. So the idea of stockholder theory, some argue, though is inconsistent with the idea of corporate social responsibility something that's at the cost of the stakeholder. For example, a company donating its goods or services to help those hurt in a natural disaster in some ways may be considered not taking action in the best interest of the stakeholder. But instead, Friedman argues that shareholders should themselves decide how much and to whom they'd like to make donations. So some may argue that goods provided to society in times of need build further allegiance to a corporation and, in theory, meet the stockholder's theory requirement in order to look after the best interest of the stockholder. So the Friedman Doctrine is certainly controversial. Um, in left-wing social activist Naomi Klein's book, The Shock Doctrine, she criticizes the theory, saying that most citizens become impoverished while corporate elites gain enormous wealth with this perspective. But as we consider the strengths of the stockholder value theories, Adam Smith's arguments about the invisible hand of the market guiding an organization to particular types of performance is useful to keep in mind because he argued that firms that provide and support the public firm are the firms that are the most viable in the long term. So the strengths of this perspective are typically defined as enriching shareholders, but improving the overall economic performance of any organization, and that self-interest by organization should then maximize long-term thinking. In short, organizations cannot abuse its community if it wants to be viable beyond just tomorrow. Not surprisingly, there are a number of weaknesses identified with this perspective. Most of the criticisms can be categorized as a difference between the theory and the practice. Initially, it can be in the interest of shareholders in a modern environment to focus on short-term profits versus long-term profitability. In these ways, critics suggest that the assumptions of Smith and Freedom, Friedman and what they argued about the interest of the long-term viability of organizations doesn't reflect modern realities of shareholder value in a global stock exchange environment. Second, critics argue that the shareholder view is naive because it ignores that profits require trust and goodwill with other stakeholders ranging from regulatory stakeholders to consumers and other public stakeholders. Finally, 
Marxist critics argue that the perspective elevates the interests of the management and shareholders in a way that it alienates them from the public good. When profits are the central driving force of any organization, then any social mission is functionally irrelevant, and those actors who profit will always act in their own interests rather than the public good. So it's controversial, and it's certainly one that has fallen out of vogue, but it's important to understand because the the threads of shareholder value you find emerging in criticisms of social responsibility and in arguments about the purpose of business in a lot of different ways. So whether you take a Friedman perspective, that is the absolute ignore social good, focus on the shareholders and let them decide, or you take more of an Adam Smith argument that says that, you know, it's in the long term in the interest of the shareholder to do good for an organization to do well, it's still an interesting but controversial approach to, to theories that focus on corporate social responsibility.